Hello, and welcome to the Yarnings Podcast. I'm Christine, and I'll be your host. This is episode 39. I'm calling it An Affection for Color. (laughs) It is Tuesday, December 16th, and it is cloudy outside. It is not raining, and it is not windy. This last week has seen both of those things. Uh, We had a day um, last Thursday. There was crazy wind, and a lot of people in the county lost power. We managed to escape that, but other people in my family were not so lucky. Um, So there's been a lot of parts of trees down and all that fun stuff. Um, But yeah, it's it's 48 degrees, which is fairly nice for December. So um, yeah, it looks, seems like we will have just more of the same, probably a little cooler for the next week or so, um, and rain off and on, so no white Christmas, probably rainy, but that's okay, that's that's normal around here. <laughs> so let's go into some actual life stories instead of my weather babbling. <laughs> so today is the 16th, which means my husband's birthday is tomorrow. I, I like to celebrate a whole month for my birthday. April is my birthday month. My husband's not quite as excited about that. So we're, I'm, just, I'm trying to celebrate him with a birthday week in between other Christmas stuff with his birthday so close to Christmas. It always gets a little compressed into, into a little shorter period of time, but it's fun to get to celebrate him. Um, we so we have had a pretty busy week of Christmas prep and that kind of thing, um, and then some fun family stuff. We had um, we had family over Wednesday night for dinner, um, went to church, and then Sarah, my sister in law, and the kids and I, and Eric and I went to Tuba Christmas. Tuba Christmas is this event that I guess they have in a lot of locations around the country, but this one was in downtown Portland at Pioneer Courthouse Square, and there were over 300 tubas. There was a couple different variations of tubas, um, euphonium and sousaphone, I want to say, but that one might not be right. Um, But it was a huge variety of, of different stuff, and it was a really cool way to listen to Christmas carols. Uh, we they did they did some that we got to sing along with and there were a lot of people there. I was really surprised at how many people came out for it. So it was really good that we got there nice and early and got a seat and got some coffee from the Starbucks to keep us warm and just hung out and had a fun time. I I let Leah knit a little bit on my project and her and Uncle Eric played played a ticket to ride on the phone and it just it was it was really fun. We'll talk a little bit more about our adventure that day in Saga Zukikuri. And then we've been doing some Christmas shopping and I've had a few early mornings um, working on <laughs> sleeping when I'm supposed to. Sometimes that doesn't always come as easy as it should but all in all it's been a good week. Um, so I guess that's all the life stories. Let's move on to yarnings and adventures in knitting. So I will put down what I'm knitting on here. I am wearing a finished object. This is my color affection shawl. This is a pattern by Vera Valamaki. And, um, this is the lace weight version. There's a fingering weight and a lace weight version. I cast this on while I was on my Rhinebeck trip. And color wise, I started out with the orange and then I added in the green. You can see there's orange and green stripes there. And then I added in the purple for the short rows that go diagonally. See the ends of those. And then the edge is a very nice purple. Let's see. There you go. That's pretty good. I have not blocked it or woven in the ends yet. I bound it off. I finished binding it off this morning. I started on it last night while we were listening to some Terry Pratchett and um, 
I probably could have finished last night, but I didn't. I'm trying to find the end. There we go. So there's another end. This is the the long end where the purple finished. And I am really happy with it. Here, I'll hold it out so you guys can see. It is humongous. Longer than my wingspan. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to block it. <laughs> I don't think I have enough blocking boards to really do that well. <laughs> but um, I'm, I have a feeling that when I block it, I'm going to get a little better flatness on the orange. The orange is pooching out just a little bit because that's where it started. And um, this edge is where the yarns were all carried. So it curls up a little more. I'm fine with that. I tried to carry them loosely. Um, so I'm hoping to wear it with some things this next week. Um, this is what I let Leah knit on while we were at Tuba Christmas. So she was excited to have a part in my shawl. <laughs> but yeah, it looks cool. It looks cool in multiple ways. And I'm really looking forward to trying out different ways of styling it. So yay, I finished my color affection. And even though I don't normally gravitate towards the orange, I really like how it turned out. There is, there is definitely orange in there. <laughs> um, so it was meant to be a fall shawl, like the fall shawl style that Boston Chen was doing. She just finished up that contest on her site. And she actually had a post where she had me had one of my pictures in it. I'm not sure if I told you guys about that. I know I linked it on on social media. So I'll link to that again. But it was a really fun project to get everybody to be thinking about how you wear shawls in the fall. Um, the yarn was Knit Picks Shadow in the colorways Clementine is the orange oh <laughs> mirror image clementine is the orange spring green and pinot something i never can remember it's a wine name let's look i've got it right here it's on the screen above you guys i have my monitor behind my laptop on the standing desk part it's just pinot there we go <laughs> <laughs> it was easier than I thought. Um, I used almost a thousand yards of lace weight. That's pretty, pretty substantial. Um, but I really did want it to be a wide shawl. And the depth of it is actually pretty good. It's not just that it's super wide. The depth is also really nice. So yeah, very cool. Fun to be done with it because I have been working on it since October 17th. Um, but I've worked on it with a lot of things. It was very good um, carry along knitting. Even though it got big towards the end, I brought it along with me and it was easy to work on. <laughs> so that's my finished object for the week. My whips, let's see. So we've got the Neon Tastic Socks, which I was knitting on, so they were right here on my desk. Not when I started the show, but beforehand. So these are my Neontastic socks. I still have a little bit to go before I start my Fish Lips Kiss Heel. The design feature that I'm doing is just something I made up. Um, I really like how it's looking though, so it might be something that I that I published at some point. We'll see how, how it looks once I get the heel done and where I transition. I'm getting close with my diagonal towards the end of the row. So I'm just eating up stitches as I go along and not really sure how it's gonna how it's gonna work out. But I think last count I was at five and a quarter inches and I usually go seven and a half before I start the heel. So I'm moving along on those. All right. Um, next work in progress, this back, is my Fruju Daybreak. And I added a few more stripes onto that this week. I don't remember how many I was at last week, but it wasn't this many. <laughs> Let's see, I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the ninth stripe. I'm going to write that down. 
nine stripes. And then next time I can tell you, I suppose I could put a marker in of where I was at, but <laughs> this one is really fun. I am loving seeing how the colors are pooling on top of each other because the length of the rows changes every time. And so it gets a little bit different and it looks awesome. So I'm loving that. And this is the Daybreak Shawl by Stephen West in Sheep Dreamery Kedges in the Lakeside colorway. And Highland Handmaid's um, White Maple Sock in the Fruitu colorway for my friend Wendy Silly Fru. So that one's just moving along. I'm just just doing it when when I need a fun project to pick up. And next on my list is the test knit that I'm doing for We Sheep. And that is almost done. Um, I have I think 10 more rows to go and then then a couple rows and then the bind off. So that's almost done. Um, I was hoping to have it done last week, but I picked up some other things along the way. All right, so I have some new work in progress. Um, I got a wild hair to do some color work. And when I get a wild hair, sometimes it means, ooh, let's design something awesome. So these are the colors that I'm using. This is some yarn for my stash. I actually was inspired when I was looking at my stash to see what some of my older yarns were. And these were from, yeah, Happy Knits. And I got them a long time ago. <laughs> I got multiple greens and then the other two. Um, I think it was the first time I visited Happy Knits. So, <laughs> I don't know, let's see, let's see when that was. My, my project page will tell me. Ooh, there we go. I bought them February 2010. So it was before the first yarn crawl that we went to. We visited Happy Knits that February. And um, I'm now ready to show you the, the project yet, but... Um, I'm knitting along on a stockinette portion of it, and I am really happy with it, and I'm really excited to wear it. Um, and I'm not sure when it's going to be released, but um, it is it is going to be going to be cool. So that's one of the new works in progress, and I picked it up and knit on a few stitches because that's what I do apparently. The second work in progress. Oh, my yarn is all tangly here. This is a wee little start. <laughs> I just cast it on this morning. Um, this is going to be the Riki hat in my leftover Socks That Rock heavyweight uh, from Blue Moon Fiber Arts. It's a rare gem and I used it for that baby sweater that I did for one of my church friends. Um, and so the theory is I need something mindless to work on when I go see The Hobbit for Eric's birthday this weekend. And none of my projects are quite mindless enough. And so I thought I needed something in the round. Um, this one does use garter stitch, so I will have to pay attention to what round I'm on. But it's going to just be a hat. So if I get off a row, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> And I'll either wear it or I might give it to Leah. She really liked these colors too. Um, I think it would fit either of our heads. So I learned a new technique. This cast on is called the German Twisted Cast On. And it's worked very similarly. Let's see if I can show you on it on the other end here. It's worked very similarly to the regular long tail cast on. Let's see if I can do this without dropping things. And I'll just show you real quick. So when you're doing a regular long tail cast on, your yarn makes an M and then you clasp it in your hand. So normally, I don't know how weird mirror this is going to be for you guys. Normally, I do it like that. Under, over, 
through the thumb. So this one, you go under both loops, put your thumb, put your needle through the thumb loop, and then use your needle to pull the, the skein yarn through and take it off the needle like normal. So under both thumb loops, down into the thumb, and then back, grab the skein yarn and pull that through. So I need to play with this a little more, but it got working pretty fast for me as I, as I cast on my 104 stitches for the hat. It's a free pattern, so I'm not afraid to tell you. But yeah, it makes a really nice, it's, it mimics, oh sorry, that was loud. It mimics what garter, garter bumps look like. Yeah, you can't see it perfectly, but, um, so that was cool. I like learning new things, and so it was a good reason to try that out. Um, I think that the Ricky hat is by Sarah Young, but I'm not sure. That sounds... That doesn't sound quite right. <laughs> huh, did I not add it? I haven't added it to my projects yet. That's why. There it is. By Sarah Young. There we go. So, I hope to have some progress on that this week when I go to The Hobbit. So those are all of my whips. One, two, three, four, five of them. Woohoo! But there's not a sweater in that pile yet. This morning, I did cast on a swatch. And it's not that much to look at. I have 10 yarn overs on the bottom because the bottom is size 10, the top is 10 and a half, and it needs to be washed. So then I can determine which one is a better fabric. But this is my Briar Rose Abundance from Rhinebeck. And look how giant these skeins are. These, are. these are actually giant. It's not that I'm holding it up next to you guys. These are actually giant, bigger than my head skeins. And I was able to do them on my Jumbo Ball Winder. The bottoms of them are pretty concave from where it wraps around. The second one was a little bit better. Um, I'm definitely going to alternate skeins. You can kind of see a little bit of the color difference. But I'm pretty sure now I was thinking about doing a custom fit design because I really liked that, but I want to do it top down so that I can make it tunic or dress length. So I'd like to make the idle wood. And this was what I had bought my Madeline Tosh Chunky Spectrum for. And then I wasn't sure about it. And so I did the cardig the Rhinebeck sweater instead. But I still really like this. And it's coming, my gauge is coming out really close to this. My main, my main concern was, do I want another thing with a big cowl? But looking at the pictures, I think it's still going to be great. My other thought was, do I want something else with raglan sleeves? I really like the look of the sleeves on my custom fit, but none of the custom fit patterns are top down. So I could try just doing the bust up. I could do a f some futzing. I think I'm just going to do this though. I think it's going to be beautiful. Um, I am probably going to do a, some sort of a design detail at my underbust and then a little more of a flare in the front so that it looks a little more like a dress. Um, so that'll be something that's not in the pattern. And I have plenty of yarn to work with. This is 750 yards each. Briar Rose, Abundance. And I have two of them, so, <laughs> um, yeah. So I need to wash my swatch today, and then I can get going. I had considered bringing that to the movie on Saturday, 
but my needles clink off a lot when I'm doing bigger bigger yarn, bigger needles, so that might have swayed me towards casting on the hat. <laughs> um, and then I have another needle adjacent project. I have some yarn um, for a test knit that um, the yarn was provided for me, so I'll be casting that on. I'm kind of thinking I won't do that until after Christmas because I want to get on all the fun things that I'm working on. I really want to be working on the sweater during the Christmas days, so. I do have a stash enhancement coming of some wool and vine yarn from Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast as part of Knit More Girls' 25 Days of Enabling. I was enabled. <laughs> um, I'll link to their thread again because they keep adding awesome stuff and it's not all yarn. Some of it is products, stuff that you could use for last minute gifting. There's still some shipping days. <laughs> all right. I think that's all the knitting. Let's move on to Sagas of Geekery. I played some board games this week. Um, I played Race for the Galaxy with Eric. I think that was Tuesday night. Um, we <laughs> That one is just one of my very favorites to pull out when we have the time. And usually we play a couple games so we can do best of two or best of three. And <laughs> so that one's fun. Um, and then when Sarah and Leonard and little Leonard were over, we played Splendor. Um, we taught Leonard and Sarah that one a couple times. And that one's a really fun, easy one for them to to get going on, and uh, Eric beat us all. <laughs> okay, um, and then I tr we tried out Firefly with the new Blue Sun expansion. So we've had that since the week before Rhinebeck, and our weekends have been way busier than normal. And then weekends that we have had a chance, um, we've actually gone to the game store and played on on Sundays instead of staying home a couple times. And we knew that to try it out the first time, we needed a long stretch of time. So on, what night was it? I don't even know. Friday night, Eric stayed home from his normal gaming. I didn't have a virtual knit night like normal. And so we tried it out. And it required pulling out the card table because well, the one table, we used to have two tables hooked together and we sold one of them in our big furniture declutterama. Um, so we had to pull out the card table so that we had enough space for all of the stuff. And even with that, it was pretty cramped. It adds on a whole nother board. I'll put a picture in here so you guys can see. And I couldn't get any further because it was... Um, I stood on a chair. I still couldn't take a picture of the whole thing because it was so big. <laughs> um, so it adds on a whole other section of the board and it adds on more people to deal with and more planets to go to. So a couple more decks of cards and a whole other part of space to explore. And then it has new goals and um, some other stuff. And it really added some nice stuff to the game. And I'm really excited to try some more scenarios for this one. We already do have the Out of the Black expansion. That's not right. Breaking Atmo. Out of the Black is the wrong one. That's a different Firefly game. Breaking Atmo. And it was just a small deck of cards. But this one was a full, a full expansion. So... Such great fun. I love this game. It really has a good feel for the Firefly universe. Okay, and then we brought Sarah and Leonard to... Sarah and little Leonard and Leah to Guardian after Tuba Christmas. And Guardian is the big game store in Portland. And they hadn't been there or seen anything like it before. And it is really the amazing showcase for Portland gaming. So we brought them in there and we played um, For Sale, which is a bidding um, property game. And we played Flux, Family Flux. And they were fun. Flux is always just chance that one's that one's hard to 
hard to guess who's going to win. You can't really can't really strategize. But first sale was quite fun, and it still worked well for Leah and Leonard. They're eleven and eight, so uh, we had a nice time, and it was really fun to to show them off Guardian. And we will definitely have to go back with them some more. <laughs> Um, also in Sagas of Geekery, the entertainment that we've been enjoying, um, we watched the fall finales of the two main shows that we're really watching right now, Castle and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh my goodness. I, I'm so interested to see where they go next. I am just amazed. Um... And yeah, I don't, I want, I won't talk about any specific plot points, but I'm really excited to see what's next. And during the break for S.H.I.E.L.D., we get the special Agent Carter miniseries. I think, I think it's um, seven episodes, but one of them's two hours or something along those lines. And that's going to be, that's going to be a fun treat for the middle of while we don't have S.H.I.E.L.D. And then this weekend, we're going to see Hobbit 3, Battle of the Five Armies. I had to look that up because I can never remember what the name of this section of the Hobbit is. <laughs> uh, the, the poster in front of our mall has been up since Guardians of the Galaxy's poster went away. So it's the big poster in front of the mall, not just the little ones. And it has said December 17th on it. And I've been telling Eric that it's because it's a special birthday present for him from Peter Jackson. <laughs> so we're going to go see that. We've seen, we've seen um, all of the Hobbits in the theater. And that reminds me that I need to go look for the movie tickets. We have ones that we bought at Costco. Costco is a great way to get a better deal on movie tickets. So I need to go find, find those. And because it's the holiday season, let's talk about the Book of Cooking. Um, this week, we ate baked potato soup. We ate Christmas enchiladas last night, which is... Eric always likes enchilada casserole, where you layer up corn tortillas and all the fillings and bake them. Well... One time we had red and green enchilada sauce and decided it needed to be Christmas enchiladas to have both of them in it. <laughs> so I think that's got to be a tradition now. We had we had that last night and I usually make a pan for him and a pan for me so that we can each have, so he can have a vegetarian one and I can have one with, with some sort of meat in it and it turned out really good. Um, I also, I'm making pizza tonight, and, um, I made a cake last night for his birthday. Um, I don't have the cookbook that actually has the recipe, but this is the same series. This is the chocolate cake mix doctor. The one that I made was actually in the regular cake mix doc doctor, the yellow one. And I also have cupcake... The cupcake one and the dinner doctor. The dinner doctor I don't think I've actually made anything out of, but... These are great books. If you ever want to make just a little bit more jazzed up than a box cake mix, there are really good ideas in here. So, um, on the meal plan this next week, I'm thinking about Christmas morning brunch. We haven't been here for a Christmas morning since 2011. I had to go look that up. We've always been pretty busy around this time of the holidays and either somewhere with the in-laws or headed to the in-laws for the last few years. So it will be nice to celebrate just Eric and I um, and planning, planning the brunch for that because that's always fun. We get to cook together. And I also have Christmas cookies on the list and I'll probably talk a little more, excuse me, a little more about that next week. I have some good pretty plans. For fanciful chatter, just real quick, I've got a new sports bra on and I love that it's pink, bright pink. Um, if you are in the market for something supportive and great, these are made in Oregon. Um, the cut brand name is Handful. <laughs> and I got it on the Black Friday sale like I did last year and it 
they are I have several of them now and I love them a lot and so it kind of went along with my an affection for color theme <laughs> you'll see I also have a flowy in my hair that has some of these colors in it I was going to dye my hair and record with all the plastic wrap keeping it in today but I decided that will wait until tomorrow <laughs> so you got pigtails instead <laughs> very light makeup a little bit natural version of myself and the happiness continues I've been appreciating the beautiful colors of the holiday um, Christmas isn't just about red and green to me I see I see Christmas in so many color combinations. My outfit this weekend going to Tuba Christmas was pink and green and white. Uh, my um, yarn from last year's Christmas that my friend Alicia gifted me was Under the Mistletoe from Blue Moon Fiber Arts. And I guess I should have brought that shawl in here with me if I was going to talk about it. But I'll put a picture. Did I take a picture? I don't know. Um... And so that is a nice, crisp, happy color combination, and I like it. I wore it with my with my pink and white stripy long sleeve shirt and um, my beekeeper's tank. <laughs> so I was totally knit weared up. Um, so finding those beautiful color combinations that make me think of Christmas, that is more important to me than decking out in traditional red and green. Not to say that I d dislike red and green. Um, I just, I'm appreciating some beautiful color combos. One of the houses in our neighborhood, a couple of the houses in our neighborhood have these beautiful blue and white snowflake lights on their house. And it just, it's crisp and clean looking and just really mimics nature a little bit and I I really I I feel feel like there's that option to celebrate in lots of different ways take what your color preference is and really make that be part of your celebration so I'm continuing to count my Christmas gifts um, that's all the things that I'm feeling an opportunity to rejoice about during the holiday season, keep myself being grateful and mindful. All of that really feeds into my happiness level during a holiday when there's a lot of things to overwhelm. Christmas isn't about overcoming chaos. That was in my sermon, in the sermon I went to this week. And it's so true. There is so much more to the holidays than just the crazy busyness. Yes, there is crazy busyness, but there's also a lot to celebrate. So I am working on keeping that happiness going. And I think that I zoomed through a giant page of notes for today. My whole notebook was full. My whole notebook page. So I'm pretty proud of myself for only 33 minutes. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's end this episode and I'll tell you where you can follow me around. I am Christine with a K on Ravelry. You can find me on Instagram as KDLB, just the letters. I'm on Twitter and Pinterest the same. Um, you can find the group for Yarnings Podcast on Ravelry. There's also a fan, Facebook fan page where I post updates at facebook.com slash yarnings. And you can view the show notes and links to everything that I talked about on yarningspodcast.com. All squished together. All right, guys. Have a wonderful Christmas week, and I will talk to you again next week. Until then, that's the story. Bye.